Hello, my name is Tara Brabazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 158, Transdisciplinarity. Now, occasionally transdisciplinarity is referred to as cross-disciplinarity. They pretty well mean the same thing, but in our vlog this week I'm going to use the word transdisciplinarity because of its Greek origins. Trans meaning across. And I particularly want to dedicate the vlog this week to Amy. Amy, you are a transdisciplinary scholar of and for the future. I think you are a remarkable human being and the research that you're looking at in terms of science and education is so powerful. It will change the country, it'll change the world via your transdisciplinary courage. Nice one, Amy. So, let's put in place some very clear definitions at the start. Those of you going, I've absolutely no idea. These are the definitions that you can put on post-it notes. So, transdisciplinarity is a way of configuring research, a way of thinking, a way of doing a research project that starts with the problem. What is the problem we are solving? So it starts with the problem, not with methods, not with literature review. It starts with the problem and then assesses, mm, what disciplinary methods, theories, concepts and tropes are going to be required to answer that problem. So it's an implementation strategy to solve major problems. That's the definition. So transdisciplinarity is particularly appropriate and popular and used when considering the really big projects. So I am considering the relationship between science and society. The social sciences and society or the humanities and society. So at its most basic, transdisciplinarity is a research strategy that crosses disciplinary boundaries to enable a more expansive and complete answer to a social problem. Now it has three main meanings and these meanings sort of overlap but they have different origins so this is quite important whenever anyone says transdisciplinarity you might need to probe them a little bit more because these three definitions have different national origins, disciplinary origins and inflect the process a little bit differently. So the first definition is the clearest so it is a research method to solve problems and requires the crossing of disciplinary boundaries to do that. So bioinformatics is a great example. So that is taking information systems and seeing how they work and apply in biomedical science. So this particular model of transdisciplinarity, a very powerful one, emerged from the German speaking countries and obviously particularly Germany. So it is nested very strongly in the sciences, the empirical sciences. But as you can see, climate change and sustainability are also incredibly solved and solved well through this type of transdisciplinary approach. So climate change requires an array of the sciences to solve these problems, but also the social sciences and indeed probably education and literacy information, literacy theory. So transdisciplinarity. The main definition perhaps that comes from the Anglophone world, so that's why it's perhaps more common in Australia and English speaking countries, is this is when concepts or methods move from one discipline to another, right? So a, a method or a concept or a theory moves between disciplines. So ethnography was used in anthropology but it moved to also have resonance in sociology and also an array of allied health professions, socio-legal studies, for example, and also criminology. The third definition, which I find really interesting and powerful, and I think this is the one to watch, which is why I'm specifying it here. This version of transdisciplinarity is incredibly important to indigenous research, but also research with men and women with impairments and disabilities and has also been incredibly well actioned in prison populations as well. And that is, importantly, 
the stakeholder, a word I have a problem with, but let's use it, a stakeholder is involved right at the start of the research project in defining the problems, the questions, what is going on. So this is a very different model because if you think about it, and by the way, this is called transdisciplinary collaboration. So it's now being used transdisciplinary as an adjective. So this is quite important because often when we use the word stakeholder and I try to avoid it, but whenever we use that word, it's like, oh, well, I've done my research and now I'm disseminating my completed research to stakeholders. Well, the transdisciplinary collaboration says, no, no, no. Right at the start of the research, it is a collaboration to even work out the frame of the discussion. Okay. You'll also see that applied research is frequently transdisciplinary. That's quite important. The other proxy that you'll hear a lot, and you'll know, right, we've got a transdisciplinary party happening here, is when you hear the phrase wicked problem. When you hear the phrase wicked problem, you've probably got a pretty good bet that you're going to require transdisciplinary approaches to answer it. Because what wicked problem means, really, is that it requires knowledge that's too big to know. So a problem that has knowledge that's too big to know invariably activates transdisciplinarity to try and solve at least a part of it. So why I like transdisciplinarity is it is an ordered movement over disciplinary borders. And look, it's quite funny because interdisciplinarity is very often used in the humanities, so I use it a great deal. And look, it's a bit chaotic. It's a bit fun, it's a bit disco, it's, it's a bit passionate. So here's this thing, here's that thing, boom, put it together, do something fabulous. And of course, post-disciplinarity is the zombie apocalypse. But the two terms that we're using in the middle of this series, transdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity, are much more ordered, a way of organising a way of knowing, yeah? And there's a reason for that. You're about to hear some interesting disciplinary points here. So the word transdisciplinarity emerged in 1970. 1970. At the University of Nice. Now, this is important. The word transdisciplinarity emerged from a seminar on interdisciplinarity in the university. So the term transdisciplinarity comes from a discussion on interdisciplinarity. So interdisciplinarity was first. So the Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget created the term. So in psychology, you can see what we're doing here. So he argued that we needed to see a much more organized way of thinking about movement between ideas, that interdisciplinarity was not giving the clarity and the order that's required to create systematic knowledge. So he wanted a, and he used this phrase, system of knowing beyond the individual disciplines. Now, the great amazing thing, this happens in academic life all the time, while this work is happening in Europe, in the United States, Jack Lee Mahan in the US was also having very similar thoughts and at the same time started to express this mode of transdisciplinarity as well. His focus was on setting the frame or the point of reference for the research. So what is the research about? How can we put a frame around this research? And therefore, for Jack, it was about exposing disciplinary boundaries and thinking about more complete ways of knowing. This is great, isn't it? So as you can see, transdisciplinarity is rational, it's logical, it's not chaotic, it is planned, and it is meaningful. So of all the areas that we're discussing, I think, transdisciplinarity is the one that aims to achieve what's often called a unity of knowledge. A unity of knowledge with an intense interaction between academics and practitioners. So you know where I'm going next. For all my extraordinary students in the allied health professions, you're very precious to me, transdisciplinarity is really your seam to mine. It's pragmatic and it's problem solving. And of course often the wonderful nanotechnology is seen to be the archetype, the example of transdisciplinarity. Because nanotech, nanoscience changes our understanding of matter, of energy and indeed of information. 
and it was also a critique of the hyper-specialisation of the sciences. So that's what I love about nanotech. People say, oh, look, you've got to keep politics out of science. Science isn't political. And then along comes nanotech, which, you know, it's, its first propulsive need was to critique the hyper-specialisation of the sciences. Let's do this differently. And that's the transdisciplinary project. But it also aims for integration. That's the important word here, integration. We're not creating a grand or a singular theory here, right? So transdisciplinarity is not evangelical. It's not like there is one way, it's my way, transdisciplinarity. It's not that at all. In fact, it's the exact opposite. It's an integrated approach to solving problems. So transdisciplinarity enacts one epistemological protocol incredibly well. And that is, it offers reflection through practice on the boundaries and the borders of disciplines. Remarkable work. So we are aware of the borders of disciplines when we cross them. So when I'm asked to talk about transdisciplinarity, particularly for the disciplines that don't use it as frequently, say as allied health or nanotech, I often describe it as a plug-in and play strategy. So you have a mobile phone and you might plug in that mobile phone in your car and then you unplug it, you plug it in at work or you plug it in in the gym say. So you've got the same phone, the same phone that you're plugging in in different locations and that same phone has different functionality and different purposes in each of those different locations. So that's transdisciplinarity at its most basic, which is the movement of methods. Plug in and play. Movement of methods. So, for example, participant observation moves from sociology and, say, into library and information studies, which is remarkable, or indeed museum studies. Some of my favourite work happens in oral history, when oral history methods are removed from history, its nested discipline, and applied, say, and I've read a great thesis on this, in speech pathology. One of my favourite theses ever produced at Flinders University used oral history methodologies to provide a history of nurses in the Royal Flying Doctor Service. So, of course, Royal Flying Doctor Service, so the nurses are invisible in the project through using oral history methods the nurses came back. Magnificent, transdisciplinarity. So unplugging from one discipline, plugging into another, and therefore the problems that are best solved through transdisciplinary methods are what are often called translational problems. So you've got an issue, a translational problem, social justice issue, that you, is complex, is big, and one discipline is never going to answer it. But it also has conceptual rigour. So when you do actually unplug and replug, you have to reflect on what is the same and what is changing as you're moving between the disciplines. So how a concept has developed in one discipline uh, is now changing as it's moved to another. So ethnography does alter when you're applying it, say, in sociology, and then you're moving it to criminology. The same method does change. Transdisciplinarity asks you to reflect and be avert and accountable in the changes through that movement. So transdisciplinarity at its best is a unifying mode of thinking. The boundaries between disciplines are transcended and it creates a new way of knowing and a new way of integrating knowledge. So transdisciplinarity is transgressive. It emerges when a philosophy, a concept, a hypothesis, a problem moves and applies to other fields. And then it roots and re-engages to create more complex and interesting ways of thinking about methods and strategies and theories and concepts. So, if you have a wicked problem, then transdisciplinarity is the way that you solve it. I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.